Hi, and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to have a look at this puzzle. Um, now, this puzzle has been sent to me by Sam Kappelman Lines, who some of you may know is uh, a member of the UK Sudoku team. He's one of the finest solvers of Sudoku in the UK, as well as being our website designer. And um, Sam sent me this puzzle and said that it's a very beautiful puzzle, so uh, we're going to have a look at it and see how we can see how we can go. Now if you want to try the puzzle then click on the link under the video and it will take you to our software and you can you'll see exactly what I'm going to see now and you can have a go yourselves. Um, now as I'm just staring at this puzzle um, it is a very interesting design. It seems to have four different areas that are shaped like this and these are sort of rotating around the grid um, so, okay, I'm not sure how to use that, but it is a it's a very unusual looking puzzle. Right, let's let's have a go and see if we can solve it. So, as always, what I'll do, I'll start with Snyder notation. So, Snyder notation is a way of describing notation that's looking at three by three blocks in the Sudoku. And if a number can go in exactly two positions in a 3x3 three three block, then you can notate it like this, adding little highlighting to the cells. And it's certainly the method I, I recommend to start any sort of puzzle. Um, and sometimes it's not enough. If the puzzle is extremely difficult, then uh, you might have to go beyond Snyder notation into a more comprehensive form of notation. But this is certainly the way I would begin. I've not actually managed to enter any digits at all in this puzzle yet, which is a bit disconcerting. Uh, oh no, I thought I was going to get a 1 there, but no. Hmm. I'm, one, I'm now wondering whether Sam's trolling me by sending me this. <laughs> Maybe this is some sort of monstrous puzzle and He's just gonna. He's just doing this to what enjoy watching me suffer. Uh, I can't enter. I'm not able. Oh, this is weird. Hang on a sec. There's something going on here. Now look. Look at the pencil marks are all symmetrical. Okay, so I am going to talk just briefly now about a very, very esoteric technique. You don't come across this in any of the solvers on, online. Um, but it is a technique that it exists for Sudokus that are incredibly symmetrical. And it's called Girth's Symmetrical Placement, believe it or not. Girth, G-U-R-T-H, after the mathematician who first described the property. And it's a property whereby if a Sudoku has given or symmetrical givens, and you can see actually now I'm looking at this, this Sudoku does have symmetrical givens. Now what do I mean by symmetrical givens? I mean that when we rotate the puzzle around 180 degrees, numbers always rotate to consistent other numbers. So you can see that the 1 and the 9 here are sort of, if we were to rotate this puzzle around, this one would come to this position. But look, if we do the same with this one, it hits this 9. If we do the same with this 9, it would hit this 1. So the 1s and 9s are symmetrically placed. And I think I'm seeing the same with 2s and 8s. Let's just check it. Yeah, OK. 3s uh, and 7s. OK, yeah, right. 4s and 6s. So I think this means that there must be a 5 in the middle of the grid. But it's not going to help me very much to put that in because 5 has no symmetrical counterpart in the grid and this is the only square that doesn't have a symmetrical counterpart in the grid. If I rotate this square around 180 degrees I end up with this square. So I think by girth symmetrical placement we could put a 5 in the central square. which is um, Now girth symmetrical placement, I've been thinking about doing a video about it for ages because it's a fascinating thing to me and indeed describing exactly why it is a valid thing is quite a tricky thing to do. That um, I've discussed this with Sam and with Tom Collier, um, and they've both um, 
uh, manfully attempted to get my little old brain to understand it, and I think I do now understand it, but it's, um, it is a very, very interesting and powerful technique for Sudoku puzzles that are almost overly symmetric. But the problem with this puzzle <laughs> is that everything is... I can't use this symmetry to do anything other than give me this 5 because everything already oops, everything already has a symmetrical counterpart so some puzzles this would allow me to make more pencil marks but I don't really see how I'm going to be able to do that here what the heck? right okay so we're going to have to think differently about this. How on earth am I going to solve this puzzle? I haven't managed to put any digits in the grid apart from by using okay, symmetrical placement. Right, hang on a second. Uh, apologies for the radio science. I'm just trying to see whether I can. Let's let's just check. We've got a lot of rows and columns with um, five digits in, so I'm just going to have a look at those. We've got five, six, seven, and nine along here. So this square you can see can only be a five or a seven, I think. And this square can only be a five or a nine. This square can be anything, this square can be anything. So we're gonna what we're gonna find now is that if we look at the symmetrical counterparts to these two squares, these two squares will also be uh, pairs. So let's have a but I, I mean it's unfortunate in that I don't think it's gonna give me anything. One, three, four, five. So this is a one or a five, and this is a three or a five. And we're gonna be able to do the same, I think, with these two squares again just because of the rotational symmetry of the puzzle so four five seven eight this square here can be a five one eight that's four five up here as well two three five six two five there <laughs> oh, what, what am I meant to do here uh, right okay Right, okay, I'm going to try something different. If we look at sevens. Seven is li limited. In, in terms of where a seven can go in column seven of the grid, there are only those two positions. Now, I'm just wondering whether or not we can find either an X-wing or a swordfish let me just stare at this for a second. Um, oh dear, I might have a might have a child care issue in a second. That's going to be. Um, this square, this square can is the only square that can be a seven in column two of the grid, and this square. So there is a, an X-wing on sevens. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with seven uh, X-wings, sorry, <laughs> I'm not sure most of you are familiar with sevens. Um, what I've noticed here is that in these two columns, the sevens are limited to just two positions, and that these two positions correspond in terms of the rows that they appear in. So if we imagine we're looking at a solution to this puzzle, there's either going to be a 7 here and a 7 here, or if, there, if this isn't a 7, we know that the 7 is going to have to be in that position in the column, which is going to place a 7 up, up there. So we could have that arrangement. Now why does this matter? What this allows us to do is to conclude that there is no more 7 possible in either row 1 
or row 5. So I'm going to be able to eliminate 7s from a number of cells that could would otherwise seem to be able to take 7. You can see this square, for example, this square, this square. But, hang on a minute, now let's just think about this, because if there is an x-wing on 7s in these positions, there must be an x-wing on 3s in the rotated position. Good, good lord. That is right. So, that means that I think these two squares will be the only positions threes can go. And uh, by the way, so the reason that, of course, I know that it's an X-wing on threes is because the sevens and threes are symmetrically deposed in this puzzle. So um, these two squares, obviously, are going to be crucial. And then I would imagine, if I'm not mistaken, those two squares are also the only positions that threes can go in this column. Now... I'm just trying to now imagine let's just highlight some of this uh, I'm going to use central highlighting um, to indicate the 7s and the 3s and I apologise I know this is taking some time but my brain is feels like it's about to explode here the, now Now, hang on. There's also, therefore, that there's going to be another. There's going to be other X wings here because we've got we've got this weird. There's going to be the same thing going along in a uh, row two, isn't there? So, if we look at I think it's going to be sixes, isn't it? It's going to be sixes in these two positions. Let me, um, let me go to highlighting in a, another colour. Let's use blue. A six can only go in this square and this square in this row. Now I'm guessing that therefore these two positions are also going to be the only positions in row 7 that the 6s can go into and you can see that's working out oh I've done the wrong highlighting colour sorry uh, da, da, and, da. Mm -hmm. and of course because 6s and 4s are symmetrically placed that means that we're going to find the same thing for 4s I think in this square this square uh, I presume it's going to be this square and this square okay so now let's just put the numbers in just to remind ourselves and I, I just need to think about this for a second so, so this so now if we These X-wings now are having a really weird effect on this puzzle because the 7 X-wing obviously is eliminating 7s along the top row of the grid and this central row of the grid. But the 6 uh, X-wing that we've also found is appearing in the rows. So that's affecting the columns here. 
So there are, so this square What the heck am I meant to appreciate here? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to identify how these X-wings overlap to the maximum extent. So you can see in this square, this square, this square, it feels like these are the squares that are the key ones. Right, okay, so let's let's actually try and work this out. So Oh hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Look, look at the central square of this grid. We've got all of the numbers that are that this X wing is affecting are appearing in the central three by three block. So, six, seven. So I need to put the numbers three, four, six, and seven. Ah, oh, this is unbelievable. Th oops, this is unbelievable. Yeah, so where can the numbers 3, 4, 6 and 7 go in the central column of the grid? Now, obviously we can't have 3, 4, 6 or 7 in any of those three squares. So I've got, uh, I've got a maximum of 6 squares left to put 4 different digits. But, look, look at that square. That square cannot be a 3 because there is a 3 in the box. It cannot be a 4 because of the X-Wing. It cannot be a 6 because of the other X-Wing. And it cannot be a 7 because of the third X-Wing. This square here cannot be 3, 4, 6 or 7. And what do you know? Down here, this is the most beautiful puzzle. This is absolutely unbelievable. Now, this square cannot be a 7, it cannot be a 3 because of this x-wing, it cannot be a 4 or a 6 because of these x-wings, so this square cannot be 3, 4, 6 and 7. So there are only 4 squares in the central column of the grid that can be 3, 4, 6 and 7. And that's this one, and now it's all going to get very complicated with the notation this one, this one, and this one. Uh, that is unbelievable. And what we're going to find, because of the rota rotational symmetry here, is we can do exactly the same thing here, in this row. <laughs> so there is, there is the only places 3, 4, 6, and 7 can go in the central row of the grid are going to be these two squares and these two squares. That, I mean, Please write in and tell me if you have seen anything more beautiful in Sudoku space ever than that. But that is quite, quite extraordinary. But having said all that, I don't know if it's going to help me solve the puzzle. So I'm now going to have to start thinking about that more carefully. <laughs> so this square can be 3, 4, 6 or 7. That, in fact, that's the only options. And you can see it's a 3 or 4 in the row already. So this square can only be 6 or 7. This square uh, can only be... Oops, it, well, this square can't be a 1. Now, this is this is going to give us our first digit. What's going on in terms of the highlight? Why won't it let me... Ah! I want to put 4, 6 or 7 into this square. Now, you can see that because this square cannot be... Uh, a one anymore because of we found this this quadruple in these four hi highlighted squares. I'm actually going to be able to fill a one into this square. And the weird thing about this puzzle is the moment I fill in a one here, I know this square must be a nine because of its symmetrical counterpart. So you can see 
Now this must be a three or a four, uh, and this must be uh, three, four, or six. Now, again, what we're going to find is well, because of the rotation, we're going to be able to do exactly the same trick in this square. And I haven't highlighted something I could have highlighted there. Yeah, look at that. Eights can be highlighted. Eights can be pencil marked into those two squares because the twos could be pencil marked here. Um, wow. <laughs> so this is going to have to be a two. And this is going to have to be an eight. And let's get rid of the eight and two pencil mark from these squares. And see what we can do next as a result of that. So I'm going to be able to eight. It's, it's a very strange puzzle to do because the moment we pencil mark anything new, we can just rotate and immediately pencil mark something else as well. So it, it, it's truly, I mean, it really is mind blowing this. Um, nines into these two squares, ones into these two squares. Um, okay. Now, four, six, and seven. So I think probably the next squares I'd be looking at would be five, seven, nine. I'm going to actually have to pause here because, um, as a my wife is calling me. One second. Right back. Sorry about that. It's um, it's children's tea time at the moment, and um. <sighs> I'm doing my duty. Um, now, let's come back to this. This extraordinary puzzle. Um, and just got this. Oh, well, look, we've got a one here. So this square here, which I pencil marked as one or a five, can only be a five. Now, five, five is an interesting digit because that is the digit that we know rotates to itself. So that's going to give us a five here. And I'm presumably going to, yes, this two here is hitting that square, this... <laughs> and is this it? This puzzle is now going to just basically solve itself, isn't it? Because now this 5 here sees this square, <laughs> which was pencil marked as a 3 or a 5. So that means this is a 3. We're going to find we can therefore fill in this square up at the top. That's a 7. Um, this is absolutely mind-blowing. Four here, that's going to have to be a six over here now. You can see that this square here now, uh, this can no longer be a seven. We had this pencil marked as a six or a seven. Um, I'm not actually sure now whether that was part of the X-wing though. So I think in theory this square is a six or a nine, isn't it? I'm get, getting quite confused about what all the pencil marks mean. So maybe we should tidy some of these up. Um, so going along here, we've got six and nine into these two squares and a six here. So this is gonna have to be a nine. At the moment I place the nine here, that gives me a six here. Now this six is definitely part of an X-wing. So that means I think that this square down here is gonna have to be a six by the um, X-Wing logic. And this nine here uh, is gonna allow me to actually place a one in the grid in its symmetrical counterpart. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this square down in this corner has to be a one. Um, and maybe I won't just put, bear that in mind. I'm not gonna actually fill it in now, but that is what I think the implication of this being a nine is. Um, so let's carry on. Obviously, this square can't be a six. Uh, this square can't be a six. You've now got a three, four pair here. So this is going to be a seven. The moment this is a seven, we know this is going to have to be a three because of um, because of girth and because I suppose there's a four there. But there we go. Three, four like that. Now this can't be a four. And what do you know? It's going to be a one to complete the column, which is exactly what we predicted. Um, so. I actually think this puzzle is going to completely collapse at this point. Um, it's sort of going to spiral outwards, isn't it? And we're just going to find that we can um, fill in all the digits. So after that initial step, um, which was mind-bending, 
and so cool. Um, we're actually able to finish the puzzle with relative ease. Um, I'm just filling in the fives there. We know they're all symmetrical. So if we look down this column, we need a two and a three. Uh, that's going to have to be the two. This is a three. The moment this is a three, I know this is a seven because of the curve technique. Um, that means this is a seven down here. And hopefully, if I haven't made a mistake, that means that's going to be a three. Seven, three here must reverse itself out into seven, three like that. Um, this to complete this column now, this digit has to be uh, what's that going to be a six? I think that's a six, which means this is a four. Um, and we must need two, four, and nine across here, so that's going to be four. Two, nine, one, eight, six, and that should be a four there. Which so it's still all looking quite quite doable. One, two, and seven along here. So that's going to be seven, one, two. And again, what we can do as a result of that is simply unwind the other side. Seven, two, and three. Oh, sorry, nine, eight, and three. Um, six and four into these two squares, so that's going to have to be this way around. Six, four, and hopefully this will be an eight. And we're left with just finishing off the middle, which is going to be eight, nine, two, one. Check. Looks good to me. That, my friends, is probably my favourite Sudoku I have ever done over all these years. That is that is a sublime work of genius. Um, please, in the comments, if you um, if you solved it, if you spotted what I spotted, I'd love to get your feedback on what you thought of this puzzle. I don't know whether Sam created it, or whether it's something that he you know he's found online or found in a book. I'll find out and I'll let you guys know because that that is a work of genius. Um, yeah, my favourite Sudoku of all time. Wow, wow! I'm gonna. I will dream about this puzzle. That is how good it was. It lost for words. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.